Today we're looking at the best British reality TV shows to learn English. From Love Island to The Bake Off, there's something for everyone. So if you're ready, let's do this. I've divided each show up into four categories. We've got language, culture, accents, and level. And that's gonna help you to identify which show is appropriate for your level or for your interests. All right, so let's get into number one. Possibly the most quintessentially British show of them all, The Great British Bake Off, or The Bake Off as it's also known. Now that their sponges are cool, the bakers have just 10 minutes to prepare their Victoria sandwiches for the judges. A classic Victoria sandwich has just two finishing ingredients, jam and sugar. This captures the innocent joy of baking delicious things and turning it into a reality TV program. Presented by Noel Fielding and Sandy Toxvig, soon to be Matt Lucas, a group of amateur bakers go through a series of weekly challenges and are eliminated one by one by judges Prue Leith and Paul Hollywood until there is one champion baker. That the winner of the Great British Bake Off is... Kansas! <laughs> Now it's all very, very British. The presenters have styled it on a traditional English fake with bunting, a beautiful green lawn. It's beautiful. I think they want to transport you to an idyllic English village in the summertime. That's the kind of feel that they've got. And for the most part, it, it works. Really running out of time. <gasps> They're flat as a pancake. This is where people start to panic, and now I really understand it. I just want to do this because they do this on the show. It so doesn't work. It's so stupid. Okay. <gasps> You'll also get to see lots of traditional British baking recipes, like Victoria Sponge, Spotted Dick, that kind of thing. Now, linguistically, of course, we're going to get lots of fantastic cooking and baking vocabulary, like this one. Overbaked, and the batch will become tough and crispy. A good dollop of icing will cover a multitude of sins. A dollop is a large amount of something, usually something soft. So we talk about cream, so a dollop of cream on your pie or whatever. You might have a dollop of ice cream, a dollop of jam, that kind of thing. It's a great word to use and used frequently in baking. Of course, you also have a variety of accents, people coming from all across the country to compete in this competition. And of course, because it's reality TV, you're going to have very natural conversations between the contestants and the judges. I actually find it more relaxing being on location in a prison, I think, than being here <laughs> right now. So in terms of level, I think this is perfect for students who are A2 and above. Now this show was originally done by the BBC and is now produced by Channel 4, so you can find it on those two platforms. Also, they have episodes on YouTube and Google Play. And I have to say, I personally recommend this program really highly. It's a lot of fun. Show number two, Love Island, okay. That's right, Love Island. You may have heard of Love Island. If you haven't, it's a reality dating program where a group of beautiful young women go into a villa with sexy young men and love blossoms. Love blossoms, usually drama, but there is some love as well. It is, it's entertainment. I'll say that much. It's definitely entertainment. <laughs> As the one and only judge on this talent show panel, I had to spend at least 20 minutes last night deliberating over which were my favourite moments from this series of unseen bets. It airs in the summertime over here, although there is a winter edition as well. Culturally, I think this is an interesting window into young British people, into the conversations that they're having. Um, into the interests that they have. There's a lot of banter between them, and I think that's a very British thing, is banter is when you tease and you joke uh, with people, and it's a kind of way to, to bond with them, and there's a lot of banter in Love Island. I am the bad man, I am the bad man. I'm Batman. <laughs> now, do these people represent all young people in Britain? Hell no, but it's a fascinating window into some. Now, language-wise, it's very, very rich. I think 
If you're interested in British slang, this is a fantastic show. There are words and phrases that I've never heard of that I have to look up in a dictionary, maybe not a dictionary, but I have to look up on the Urban Dictionary to find out what they mean. For example, this. He was but they can't crack on. Well, no, yes, we can, Dan, for goodness sake. We crack on when people, no, we're cracking on, we fancy each other. He can't walk for a room and me not go up to him and want to kiss him. So in this context, crack on means to start flirting, to start to try and uh, get to know someone romantically, so they're cracking on with each other, right? This is a bit of slang that I didn't, I didn't know before I watched the show. You are also going to be exposed to a wide, wide variety of accents, okay? You've got Geordie, Scouse, Cockney, MLE, Estuary English, RP is all there. Scottish, everything, right? And that's fantastic. If you want to be exposed to different pronunciation features, this is amazing. Now, for that reason, because of the slang and because of the, the variety of strong accents, I would say that this, the level would be a B1 and above, okay? I think you need to be slightly stronger to really appreciate this program. And I think the more advanced you are, probably the more you're gonna get from it. Now, of course, because this is reality TV, you're gonna get really natural conversations. The flow of the conversation, the intonation, the stress patterns, that's all gonna be completely natural. So that's fantastic as well. Because you haven't been perfect, you haven't been Amazing. So then there's something missing in your, I, your side I'm not, of things. I'm not like that, Wes. I would not jump to conclusions. In terms of how to watch this programme, it's made by ITV, okay? Uh, you can get it via ITV or via Amazon Prime if you have that. Now, there are also loads of clips on YouTube. Love Island have a YouTube channel, so you can go and check that out. So I often tell my learners that you don't actually need to watch a full episode of something. You can watch just a two or three minute YouTube clip. Watch that a few times and try and focus on different things each time. So focus on vocabulary the first time, pronunciation the second time, intonation, stress. There's so much you can learn from just a two or three minute clip uh, that yeah, I think those YouTube clips are perfect. All right, let's move on to another dating program. First dates. Do you ski? Oh my God, I love skiing. Yeah, me too. So I went to Whistler in Canada. I went heli skiing in Whistler like three years ago. I did my instructor's course in Whistler. So did I. Oh my God. Oh you my did. God, did you? That's mental. Yeah, that's really weird. This is a slightly sweeter reality dating program than uh, Love Island. Singles are invited on a first date with someone they've never met before in a London restaurant. There is a charming French maitre d' that welcomes them into the restaurant and then they sit down and they have their first date. It can be hilarious, it could be cute, it could be really awkward, all of the above. Even when there's a silence, and it's not an awkward silence, I'll have to fill it with something. Oh, the whole alien things, aliens definitely exist. I'm not some like crazy alien lover, but like, I think it like, there's no way they don't. Now I think the best cultural aspect of this is the variety of British people that you're gonna see. They invite very quirky, interesting people onto the show. And there's always a kind of heartwarming story about each one. So you definitely feel a, a connection with some of them. As a result, language wise, of course, you're gonna have a variety of accents, people from all around Britain, which is fantastic. This is the long time I've been single. How long have you been single? Nearly two years. You say hey. I wanna meet somebody that's gonna treat me with respect I deserve, I suppose. There's a lot of storytelling going on as well, and so you're gonna hear a lot of narrative tenses. In the show, they often find a kind of um, aspect of their lives that's interesting, and th in the date, the person will tell that story. So you are gonna hear lots of narrative tenses, past, uh, past perfect, that kind of thing. So the variety of accents, you're gonna get accents like this one, multicultural London English. How long are you modern for? Coming up to like two years. Two years, same, same. Yeah. Same. You got the face for it though, so same. Same. Oh, thank you, you too. So that is an example of multicultural London English, which maybe you haven't been exposed to. Certainly it's not in English language course books or textbooks. So this is the kind of thing that you're only gonna get through uh, British TV, uh, through YouTube, things like that. So yeah, that's what I love about these kind of programs is that they give you a different insight into British culture and uh, British English. And of course, you're gonna get lots of informal language as well, like this. This is the well posh restaurant too, I'm not used to. Posh. posh. Do you prefer? I don't know what any of this means. Well posh, well posh. So well 
it's a kind of informal way to say very. So oh, it's very posh. You could say that was well good means that was very good. In terms of language, I would suggest A2 and above. The producers do quite a good job of allowing there to be lots of space in the conversation. So it's not, the, the conversations aren't too fast. There's plenty of time for you to kind of listen and understand what they're saying. The program is made by Channel 4 and it's available also on Amazon Prime Video. There is a First Dates YouTube channel as well, which you can watch. It has loads of clips. They are fantastic. Strictly Come Dancing, or Strictly as it's also known. Now this is a reality show unlike any of the other ones. This is glitz, this is glamour, this is prime time BBC. Strictly so far has been the best thing I've ever done. Just learning to dance is so much fun and hard work, but also so rewarding. So a group of famous British celebrities are paired with professional dancers and they're given weekly dance challenges and one couple is eliminated each week until you're left with the best ballroom dancers in the show. It's fun, it's funny, it's glamorous, it's cheesy. It's great family entertainment. Culturally, it's an interesting insight into British celebrity culture. So you're gonna have a group of famous people uh, that you might not know originally, but then through the program, you get to know them. Also, when the show is on, it's so popular that a lot of people are talking about it. So if you're working in a British office, then more than likely people are gonna be talking about Strictly Come Dancing. So you'll be able to participate in those conversations. Now, of course, linguistically, when they're dancing, the only language you're gonna get is body language, right? But when there is speaking, when they've stopped dancing, uh, you're gonna get lots of interesting uh, phrases from the judges, for example. The judges are giving their opinions, they are uh, giving suggestions, so a lot of tentative language. Like, maybe you could have tried this, or perhaps next time think about this. So, yeah, using interesting phrases to give suggestions. But it, they were so finely tuned to each other. They were dancing on the same breath. If you're a dancer, you know what, what I mean. Every emotion and every expression kind of matched. Absolutely, we're well, like mirror images. Mm -hmm. Now, like with any reality TV show, they try and build in this human interest story to everything that they do. So you're gonna get a lot of storytelling. You're gonna get the contestants talking about you know, what's going on in their lives and why they're there, why they're competing, why they've chosen certain dances, and a lot of them link back to their lives. So you're gonna get a lot of storytelling, narrative tenses, so a variety of grammar structures. Um, and yeah, lots of interesting stories and vocabulary that comes with that. I'm very lucky I have such a big family. I have my two brothers, two sets of grandparents. I'm everything I am because of my family. Now I think this program is probably like an A2 and above, maybe even A1 because there's so much dancing that it might just be a really enjoyable show to, to watch as well. Um, but yeah, I think A2 and above, I think you'd really appreciate this. Now this show airs on the BBC uh, between September and December. Of course, there are loads of series that have been done in the past that you can watch on YouTube as well. And if you have any other suggestions for British reality TV programs to learn English, let me know in the comments below. I know for a fact that a lot of you will want to talk about Made in Chelsea, The Only Way is Essex. I didn't have time to talk about those, so maybe, maybe I should do a part two. All right, guys, thank you so much. This is Tom, the Chief Dreamer, saying goodbye.